So, but you just got to really look at um, what is your strategy if you're debating and go in there and try to really surround yourself to protect your business as much as you can from everybody else trying to go in with it. And the top matches and dashes together are pretty powerful for putting it together. But Chad, you're bringing up a, a good point, and John mentioned this briefly too. Um, there's the concept of defensive registration and the value of that to protect your business. Um, that can obviously uh, float across the misspellings of your domain names to different extensions, whether they go global or not, but also the value of defensive registrations for the purpose of saving money on uh, keyword buys and PPC buys inside the search engines. Let's talk a little bit about that because um, that's a strategy that a lot of uh, competitors are now using, even getting the exact match domain names that a competitor has so that they cost them more to buy the same terms in the search engines, and vice versa, why you should protect those as a company. John, maybe you can touch on that. Oh yeah, but this is another reason. So in search marketing, you're going to take a lot of effort and you're going to expect a lot of energy and productivity to put domain names and building it up. And if you do that on a .org or a .edu, and someone else later wants it on a .com, you're going to pay a lot of money to buy that from them. I mean, it's a big mistake to make, but it's made every day. And you want to see examples, just go back to like things like Delicious, the bookmark service, you know, it was English and they really did well and they got big and so they went and became delicious, uh, delicious, delicio dot US. They were D E L I E dot I T I O dot US or whatever when they started and had become dot US, delicious dot US. And, and that wasn't enough. They ended up buying delicious dot com. So they had to, they were delicious. That's, what, that's who they were. But it was years later and it came full support. We see this over and over. So, Essentially, yeah, we buy them, but we don't want a competitor to have them. If there is an exact match today, there might be an exact match 10 years ago, even better. You wouldn't want your competitor to be able to knock you out just because they bought the exact match. So if you can get it, you buy it. But if you're on anything but the .com, you should buy the .com. And if you think you're going to grow, you should control the name and go on. And if it just comes up so often, you can do it. That's how Gavin and I were doing it. I guarantee there are people around the search it and see if that name is available and they can acquire it for 10 bucks. Uh, and even if you don't use it, you still have it as a defense business so you don't have anybody else kind of uh, tell you any of your success. So this is a very, very, very strong point and a very important point. Companies are still making these mistakes today. Um, if anybody remembers the Zoom product by uh, Microsoft, they didn't own Zoom.com. They actually doesn't own iPad. Apple. So uh, it, it's a big mystery how big organizations with huge following still miss the boat owners. So don't make the same mistake in your own businesses. And just a just a little easy hint that I, I, uh, I talk about in almost every presentation I give. There's a very simple exercise you can do to protect your own brands, and that is when you get back to your office or your party leader, have your staff, your family, and friends type in the most critical brands. All those misspellings go out and register them right away because your customers are misspelling the same names as your new your staff did. They're used to typing the brands every day. And then those that you cannot register find out who owns them because that's probably some of your competitors and they own your domain names and your misspellings. And then you can decide whether you're going to take your defensive mechanisms and your defensive uh, measures to take those names back or uh, get them back in the way of life. This is a very important strategy. It's a simple, stupid uh, thing to do. Uh, it's worth the $10 a year and to do it. And also remember, if you're going to be a global company, um, don't just look at dot .com, dot .net, dot .org, look globally, and look at where those people are typing their names out of their uh, computers and browsers. And, you know, if you want to be in Germany, if you want to be in France, if you want to be in those countries, find a way to get those domain names as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the acquisition strategy of domain names. Just to comment on that, I think, um, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, one of the important things is, you know, what do I pay for a domain name that's taken? And uh, the strategy is to build my domain. What's it worth to me? How much should I spend? Am I into the long term or am I into the short term? Is it a defensive registration just to protect my main brand? Or is it something I'm possibly going to launch a product and service model someday? Let's talk about how we value domain names and the strategies to go out and get the domain names that we really want. John, let me start with you. Sure. You know, one of the things, if you're in, there's a lot of people that are in search marketing, and one of the things to do is you ask your customer, you know, what do you actually do? And they tell you, and it's not even on their web page. You know. What's your target term? And they tell you, and it's really not even the titles of their pages. So you help you all, you help them do that. Well, the same thing happens with domain. You ask them, what does it do? It's like, well, we can do these things, but really, we can do these two things the most. You look up those two things, and, you know, those domains are available. They don't, they don't even own the stack match on what it is they're 
violent. And if they're not at Reg B, available for anyone to come by, they're available through a domain. Someone who's an investor who saw ahead of time and bought them for $10, they'll sell them to you. They're, they're never going to do what you do. You know, you're, you're doing a black leather boot repair or whatever it is, sort of strange thing that you do. They're never going to do that. They're holding it to make money off the domain. They bought it for $10. You value your time enough to offer them a few hundred dollars for that domain name. And a lot of those names go for that price. If you check the options, you'll see lots of names go for, for low value. Um, because they're your names and, and they're reserved for you. So you buy them. If they get up in price, um, you start thinking about what it's worth for you today. But I buy the names that are a thousand dollars pretty quickly. Because uh, I'm doing it on someone's behalf. And they're going to pay me more than that pretty quickly for having tried for that. They're going to have me spend time doing this because they're going to be able to do $2,000 for all the work it takes. Or they could have just bought the domain for the asking price of $1,600 and had it the next day. It, it's, a, it's an economy, it's a business, and you just be practical about it. Um, in the high value of names, you, you guys know, if you're in that business, you know better than most people what the value is. And you just do that due to the uh, chances are when you go to negotiations, that will all be valuable. So my advice is, you know, the same as you look at content, you make sure that the content represents what it is that you do, so that search engines can rank you, you look at the names the same way. If the names represent what you do, you should own them. It's going to cost you a few hundred dollars, so just do it right away. It's going to save you a lot of money. It's going to cost you thousands of dollars, do your homework, just like you would anything else, and figure out if it's worth it to you. And don't shy away from sharing that information in negotiations. You ask yourself, to buy the name, someone says, I want ten million dollars for it, you say, look, I've done the math, and it's worth ten thousand dollars, and here's the math. They can come back and say, I'll, I'll sell it for thirty thousand dollars, and then you can take off the cost. How can you sell it? You got them down from a million dollar price because you did the homework, and you should have, because you're a business and you know what you're doing. Uh, so that's my advice, just don't shy away, and you do have that kind of value, and uh, if you want it, you should know uh, what that value is. Andrew, you, um, you buy the videos on the kind of ROI model, Talk a little bit about some of the metrics you use when you're buying domain names as uh, drop domain names in the aftermarket when you're trying to approach a, an owner and how you do your own metrics and multiples to buy that domain name and when you get your returns. Sure. Um, you know, right now, most of these uh, domains that price out are, I feel like a lot of these guys just take a number out of the air. Or a lot of times, what they do is they have a team search the, the, their park pages and they're like, okay, well, I mean, X dollars a month, and you know, of course, you're one and times that by 10 years, and they come with these crazy numbers. But what none of them have is data that you guys have in the audience here, which is the analytics data of this is the keyword, here's how many conversions I get. And even further so is if you're in the lead gen space, 